Good morning. We're coming on the air because D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser is holding a press conference right now. Let's listen. Provide an update uh, to provide the public with uh, the district's posture and update on the acts of domestic terrorism and sedition that unfolded in the nation's capital yesterday. I'm joined by members of my team, including the Chief of Police, Robert Conti, uh, and the Director of Homeland Security, Chris Rodriguez. Uh, we are also joined by the Secretary of the Army, Secretary Ryan McCarthy, who will be available uh, to answer your questions as well. Uh, I want to begin uh, by thanking D.C. residents uh, for heeding our call uh, to stay at home during uh, the the last two days. Uh, you did your part uh, to keep our city safe. Uh, what we saw was an affront not only to our democracy, but also to our values, um, the values that make the District of Columbia a welcoming, diverse, uh, and inclusive city. I also want to thank the men and women, men and women of the Metropolitan Police Department uh, for responding to the United States Capitol Police's request yesterday for backup uh, and quickly restoring order uh, to the Capitol building. Uh, their heroic acts yesterday demonstrate uh, what true patriotism uh, is. Uh, Chief Conti and I uh, had the I joined Chief in um, touring the city last night uh, and had the opportunity to see uh, our police at work. And so we want to thank them um, for everything that they do, uh, not only in uh, supporting the federal response, um, but in keeping our city safe as well. Overnight, uh, as expected, the Congress affirmed um, President-elect Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, uh, and it is uh, official that certification. Uh, will the, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will take the oath of office on January 20th to be uh, the 46th president of uh, the United States of America. Uh, we know uh, and we all knew uh, that the end result of this free and fair election uh, would be the oaths that they take on January 20th. This should send a clear message to our nation and the world that despite actions of uh, an unhinged president and those uh, that believe the baseless conspiracies that have been peddled um, by him uh, and, and by other elected officials, that the United States remains strong. Our democracy is prevailing, decency is prevailing, and hope uh, and change are on the horizon. While it seems like a lifetime ago, it was just yesterday, uh, that we received the final election results out of the state of Georgia. And I want to congratulate Senator, uh, what I'm going to call him, Reverend Senator Warnock uh, and Senator-elect Ossoff. I also want uh, to make a few priorities clear uh, for the new Congress uh, that, are, that are very important to the district. First, we must get statehood on the president's desk within the first 100 days of the 117th Congress. Congress must immediately transfer command of the District of Columbia National Guard from the President of the United States and put it squarely under the command and control of the Mayor of the District of Columbia. The Congress must create a nonpartisan commission to understand the catastrophic security failures that happened at the Capitol on January 6, 2021, both to hold people accountable and to ensure that it never happens again. We must also understand why the federal law enforcement response was much stronger at the protest over the summer than during yesterday's attack on Congress. I also call on the Joint Terrorism Task Force to investigate, arrest, and prosecute any individual who entered the Capitol, destroyed property, or incited acts of domestic terrorism observed yesterday. More immediately, we know that the current president must be held accountable for this unprecedented attack on our democracy. What happened yesterday is what he wanted to happen, and we must not underestimate the damage he can do to our nation and our democracy over the next two weeks. And it's not just the president who must be held accountable, so too must 
the domestic terrorists who stormed the Capitol and threatened members of Congress. What happened yesterday is textbook terrorism. And let me d read you a definition. It's from the Federal Code of Regulations. It's defined as the unlawful use of force and violence against persons or property to intimidate or coerce a government, the civilian population, or any segment thereof in furtherance of political or social objectives. The FBI has already set up a website where Americans can report tips, and today MPD is releasing its own lookout information. Any tips that are reported to MPD will also be shared with the FBI. So I encourage Washingtonians who can provide information to do so by texting 50411, 50411, or by calling 202-727-9099. We are still in the midst of our response. We have aided the federal government in establishing the security of the United States Capitol. These incidents were contained to the United States Capitol and its grounds. We will review for ourselves what occurred yesterday to commend those who perform heroically and to learn uh, what mistakes were made. With that, I want to ask Chief Conti to provide any update from the Metropolitan Police Department, uh, followed by a situational update from Secretary McCarthy. Thank you, Mayor Bowser, and good morning, everyone. As communities across the country are still processing the images of the violent mob that stormed the U.S. Capitol, I want to start this morning by thanking the members of the Metropolitan Police Department. When U.S. Capitol Police call for assistance, it was you that answered their call without hesitation. Your actions to restore democracy were nothing short of heroic and should be recognized. As MPD members, you serve the DC community each and every day, but yesterday evening, you answered the call to serve all Americans. Many of you here today understand that the district is unique in respect to the number of law enforcement agencies operating in local DC, the many federal buildings and national park lands. But I have seen some misinformation out there that I would like to clear up. MPD's responsibility is to provide public safety services to the vibrant communities that make up this great city. MPD assisted US Capitol Police when they requested our assistance on their grounds. What we did do was restored democracy for all of America and assisted our partners, the U.S. Capitol, and their approximately 2,000 member force by providing swift, by providing a swift response to an escalating situation. MPD members will continue to be responsible for local DC, but we are willing and capable, as we saw yesterday, of assisting our partners at any moment. Again, when U.S. Capitol Police call for assistance, MPD answered the call. I would also be remiss if I did not recognize the support we received from our law enforcement partners regionally and the DC National Guard assets. Please allow me to provide an update in regards to arrests made by MPD related to unrest. There were 68 individuals arrested yesterday evening and into, in, into the early morning hours of January 7th. Of the 68 arrests, 60 were adult males and eight were adult females. 41 of those arrests occurred on U.S. Capitol grounds, and to my knowledge, only one of the arrestees is from the District of Columbia. I just want to underscore that. Only one of the arrestees was from the District of Columbia. However, we still have a significant amount of work ahead of us to identify and hold each and every one of the violent mob accountable for their actions. We have collected numerous images of persons of interest that we are asking the community to help us identify. These images depict individuals engaged in various acts of violence or property destruction, and we have made these images available on our website and social media platforms. We shared these, Im these images last night uh, with the DC bids, the hotel associations, and other community partners, along with the FBI. We also have shared these images with the, with the regional airport authorities. Uh, as we speak, we have members of the Metropolitan Police Department that are scouring the area hotels, 
businesses, et cetera, uh, trying to identify some of these individuals that still may be uh, taking up residence in our, within our city. The FBI, we're working closely with them to aggressively pursue those responsible for these shameful and violent acts. You can help by taking a moment to view them and provide us with assistance. Again, they have been publicly released on our website. Anyone with information on their identities or whereabouts is encouraged to reach out to MPD at 202-727-9099 or text us at 50411. Information can be provided anonymously. In addition to what I've already mentioned, uh, we will also be sending these images out across the country to the, re to the FBI offices in every state. We have authorized a reward of up to $1,000 for information that leads to the arrest and conviction of persons responsible. And I should add that we already are receiving information and tips in, valuable tips in from residents and people who, are, who have identified some of these individuals. We will continue to assist the United States Capitol Police with security without compromising the quality and professional police service to our district neighborhoods. Residents and visitors should continue to expect traffic disruptions and a large law enforcement presence in and around the National Mall and U.S. Capitol. Now, I would like to take this opportunity to provide the identities of the persons that lost their lives yesterday. As I mentioned late yesterday, the Metropolitan Police Department is handling the investigation of the U.S. Capitol Police officer involved shooting that occurred in the House lobby area. The decedent in that shooting has been identified as 35-year-old Ashley Pemeton, Ashley, also known as Ashley Babbitt of Huntington, Maryland. This remains an active MPD investigation. There were three additional deaths that occurred, which we believe all to be the results of medical emergencies. The decedents have been identified as 50-year-old Benjamin Phillips of Ringtown, Pennsylvania, 55-year-old Kevin Greeson of Athens, Alabama, and 34-year-old Roseanne Boylan of Kennesaw, Georgia. Lastly, I would like to thank all of D.C. and our neighboring jurisdictions in Virginia for, in Maryland for adhering to the mayor's and the governor's curfew orders. And now I can turn it over to uh, Secretary McCarthy. Thank you, Chief Conti, Mayor Bowser. Um, yesterday was a horrible and shameful day in our history. But one thing we did see was incredible leadership by Mayor Bowser and Chief Conti and saw the best of this city. Uh, when they called us over at the Pentagon, uh, we started getting awareness uh, yesterday afternoon about the breach within the Capitol and quickly um, worked uh, to support, move the, our, our resources forward in, uh, in support of Metro PD and the Capitol Police and responded and truly saw some incredibly heroic things from the Metro PD and, and our DC Guardsmen, very proud of those men and women. Um, at present, there are the entire DC National Guard has been mobilized. We have also received the support from the state of Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, and New York. There will be 6,200 guardsmen in total by the weekend here at the U.S. Uh, and the, and the US uh, National Capital Region in support of the DC, uh, DC Metropolitan Police Department as well as the Capitol uh, Hill Police. At present, we have uh, over 150 personnel uh, up on the, um, the Capitol grounds and we will have 850 on the Capitol grounds by noon today. At 9 a.m. this morning, we began erecting a seven-foot non-scalable fence, which will be from Constitution to Independence and First Avenue uh, to the, uh, in front of the pond right there in front of the Capitol, that, that road right there. So um, these personnel and this security measures will be in place for no less than the next 30 days. And uh, we'll be keeping all of these um, support mechanisms in place in, in co constant coordination with the Capitol Police and the mayor's office. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.